All right. <laughs> duh, duh. Like Charlie's Angels. Oh. Yep. <laughs> Which is good because we're two army girls. So, hey, or military girls, military brats. Hey. Army, cool. Uh, so, Miss Lady Erica, real quick, can you, somebody asked me the other day, what the heck does the, why does she put woman? And I'm like, wait, hold on, let me ask her because I know what it means. Oh, you so, know, it's a womb, right? And that's the beginning, right? The womb of the man. And so that's where, I guess that's their definition of the woman. It comes from the womb of the man, right? But I, I think of it, it includes both. To me, it's the woman and the man, right? So we, we come into creation together. And so people think that like woman of the stars, Jonathan's on there. And it's like, wait, why is it a man here every time? <laughs> like, no, because we're all womb, men of the stars. We're all born of the stars, right? So I love it. And I'm the first lady, Erica, why? Because I believe that each one of us should carry ourselves in a way that we're respected in our community. We have like a personal responsibility to our community. And I'm not better than you. You're not better than me. So even though I'm the first lady, I feel like you're the first lady. Any gentleman that walks in the room, he's the first gentleman, right? Like we're all together um, deserving respect and should give each other respect. Just because somebody's doctor so-and-so doesn't mean that they're better than me. It doesn't even mean that they're smarter than me. You might have your area of expertise. And some people I know have, um, they got some book smarts, but they don't have emotional intelligence, you know? Where here it is, we have abilities where we're more in tune with our emotions and more in tune with the messages that are coming through the ether. And so we're just as intelligent. We're just as much a doctor into, you know, the paranormal science. So I find a lot of people too, they say, I'm just a mom. And that kind of like disturbs me too, because who, who could be more important than your mom? Like your mom was the most important, right? Okay, she did the nine months of labor. So she did factory work. <laughs> she did factory assembly. She had to push you out manufacture and then she had to school you you know the school of life and uh what could be more important that, to the future of the world than somebody who is just a mom you know sad that people feel that way about you know i'm just a barber but like we affect so many people and we're responsible for how we treat people even the idea that yeah you might have been treated badly but do you use that the way that you were treated as an excuse to abuse other people? And so here we go. Yeah, you know, when, when you when I was uh, here we go with the background noise. CIA, get the fuck off, okay? Ah! Stop my feet. All right, leave us alone, Archon. As a boss of the world, when this now moment. <laughs> I rebuke you. Oh, yeah, I bitch slap you. <laughs> wow, wow. <laughs> All right. So, when I was lighting the candle, I had my little stand here. Oh, my goodness. I was lighting the candle, and I heard, I said, I'm asking assistance from my inner self, my star family, you know, for, for me. And when I lit it, the name Hawthorne came through. So I, I put on some Hawthorne today, some uh -huh. Hawthorne body oil. She's my favorite. She lives in Dindara. And that's where I'm actually going to the Hawthorne temple. When I go to Egypt in June, I'm going there to go learn exactly how to invoke the spirit of Hawthorne in the prayers and bring her to life. The Hawthorne energy. That I gotta say this when I was there, that was the most um I felt a lot in the Edfu temple, which is for Horus, I believe. Yes, yeah, for Horus. But then when I got to Dendara, they they have like a little courtyard there, and my third eye started pulsing, my my crown started pours um pulsing, and we sat at this little picnic table, and I just started to pray for the women in my family 
and I could feel myself just pouring in tears and the energy went down into my spine and I found the most beautiful rock. You're making me think now I gotta go get this rock. It was shaped like a woman. Go get it. And, and while you're getting that, I'm gonna show people, um, my, my friend Whitney, thank you Whitney for sending me all these artifacts of Egypt. Look at, one of my favorite is here too. And we got these tarot cards. She had these tarot cards. So she gave you them as a gift? No, she lent them to me for the show. Oh, okay. We got the arm here, which I know Miss Lady Erica, First Lady Erica, you're gonna show me this soon. Cyrus. We got Horus. Oh wow, is that is that not the most feminine looking? Yes. Beautiful. I don't know if you guys can do that. Like when you go to Egypt, but you know, I did get me a, a rock, a nice rock. <laughs> like a mermaid. Yeah, I just felt like it was like the female flow. Like that. She reminds me like of that. This actually reminds me a lot of that. Is that like Yimiya? This is the Empress of the Sea. Oh, the Empress of the Sea. It might be considered Yimiya because she is for the water. I think so. so when, so I went there, and I didn't. Did I tell you this before? I hope not. Anyway, and so I went through that temple, and in the Hathor Temple up front, beautiful. Went to the Isis Temple that was in the back. It was all closed up. Me and my teacher sat there, and I was like just. I was focused on healing energy to the womb of my grandmother and her sister and my mother and pouring in tears. And one of the guards came and I thought, oh, we're getting kicked out. And instead they unlocked the, hot, the, the, the Isis temple. He anointed us with oil, allows us to pray inside the Hathor temple. Then he took us to the area where you go, where the priests go and wash themselves with water. And he let me Wash with water. He let me collect water. So I actually brought home water from the Isis temple. And I've met people that said never that they've been allowed to do such a thing. So I know that I was called to be going back to that place yeah. with my yeah. friends that invited me back. So my, um, I have a friend who's an archaeologist at that temple. And he's a native archaeologist. His name is Pop, and he's amazing. He's been studying the hieroglyphs since he was like 15 years old. And so he's offered to teach me everything about the hieroglyphs and the prayers that are written on the walls. So that is what I'm going to have a big story to tell you. That's what I'm going to have like all these amazing things to tell you because in June, I'm going to spend a month there. That's going to be awesome. Yes. Um, I, I was reading um, the Egyptian Book of the Dead. And I found out a lot of secrets. One, which I'll tell you in a minute. And yes, this is Yamaya. It is Yamaya. The mother of the sea said to have birthed the fish children into existence. That's me. <laughs> and then the blue and the white. And the empress is full of potential, both literally and metaphorically. Everything she does is so to bring new, loving, creative energy into the world she knows what it takes to see something grow and that's exactly what we were talking about like uh creation not nothing yeah. worth, nothing worth creating will be quick and easy it will take its toll and push you to the edge of your limits and beyond and the empress knows that it will be all worth it at the end you know, uh, one thing that I was looking at the that tripped me out was one of the pages it showed when the prayers are when they're making the their their prayer in the papyrus uh, paper. It, everybody has a scroll, right? You pay someone to 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 make your scroll, and on one of them. It shows a man kneeling down on one knee, and I'm like, what? That's like the football thing that's happening here in the US. Oh. Do you bend your knee or not? You know, and what it said in there 
is that when the man puts the knee, one knee down to the ground, it means that he can no longer be doing anything in the dead world, in the underworld. I'm like, oh, heck no. I don't, first of all, I don't comply to kneeling to anything or anyone or any entity. And now it's like the one knee down means that it stops the person that just died for, from doing anything, anything from eat, moving, from doing anything in in their in their afterlife. And I so he's to, blocking. He's blocking their. Yeah. So the football things are rituals too. Oh, of course, of course. Can Good you, night. Can you show everybody your onk? Yeah, I yeah. It's, and I'm gonna show the onk. Okay. So this is my, I love these beads. They're the most colorful. They're the most juicy. The beads remind me of the ships that I see in my dreams. They're that color. Purple, blue, pink, copper. Is there's, there's all kinds of quartz inside. So there's this quartz inside and copper and some color. But I had a good time with this one. Oh, yeah. I love it. This is amazing because, because you know, that a new helps clear this right here. A new this. Throat. It, it did something to me right now. When I was looking if at you, the middle of the unks, mm -hmm. I'm gonna show screen real quick because because you're talking about the underworld. So Anubis. This is, I went to Universal Studios and this is Anubis, right? He's in the mummy ride. So, you know, with Universal you go through and it's a ride, but it's set up like the movie set. And so the issue is the first time I went, you're in the dark hallway and you're going past him. And I looked the one time and I said, ugh, I had a feeling that he was irritated and agitated. And I said, what is wrong with Anubis? And I was there with some other people and we were talking about Anubis and we went and got on the ride, got off. My purse strap popped and everything fell out. And at the end of the ride, there's this thing where like a store. So I went and bought a new purse inside that store. This That was in October of last year. This year, a few weeks ago, I went on the ride again with my son and I was trying to go under the ropes and I got hung up in the ropes, my bra strap. I had to destroy my bra to get out of these ropes. I was tied up in the ropes. And then I got to the part with Anubis. It was one of those days, it was a Wednesday. So the, the lines were empty. And so we were just like, fuck it, let's go under the rope. And um, pop my bra, I'm looking like, well, I'm probably not looking like anything, but I'm feeling a little bit weird, but... <laughs> And I got to the Anubis and I turned the camera on with the flash and I saw him in the ropes like this. And I thought, this is why he's irritated. So the first time my purse strap popped, the second time my bra strap popped. And he's all tangled up. Look at the ropes around his neck. We gotta go in, we gotta go in the astro and get him the fuck out of here. I'm just saying. No. Or and then I was saying let's write write to um, Universal Studios yeah. Florida to let them know like you can't you know and you, once you put the symbol of the entity there there in that area you you've tied them to that area right you you basically called on them but you've got his neck throat his hands are tied up and he looks like a prisoner. But if you look down here, he is really not even touching the floor. So he's hanging in the air. It's not right. It's like black magic too. And yeah, why? I mean, it. They're, they're I'm gonna go on the side and say they didn't know, right? Because a lot of people even go inside the tombs. They don't believe anything. They don't believe in anything, right? But. Just because they don't believe doesn't mean anything, you know. I watched that mummy movie too. <laughs> yeah. and I was so irritated with that lady. I was like, she's like, I don't believe anything. And she goes reading the words out loud, and then all this stuff starts to happen. And I'm like, you moron. How could you? 
How could you not believe? Is that you, Miss Lady Erica? Yeah, kick me out. Kick me out. I don't know why. I was just bumped into it on the phone. But yeah, like just because you don't believe that something is happening doesn't mean it's not happening. But, you know, there's a reason why people put ISIS on their altar because they're actually calling on ISIS. So to actually have him hanging like that, that's a problem. Yeah, and it's also taking the people's energy that whoever rides that ride, it's taking our little... Well, he bumped into me the first time I went through, and I was like, oh, I think he's got an attitude. I thought, <laughs> oh, I got witness to that conversation. The new yeah. I've had talks with him, he is awesome. He is very, like, to the book, and um, that's why every day, I mean, even though I don't believe in it, but I do subconsciously, like my mind always says, your heart has to be as light as a feather at the end of the day. Every day, my heart should be as light as a feather, not too heavy, not not too light. It has to be just right, right? Right. And so every time when we're making a decision, and this is something I explain to people, you might feel like I'm wrong or I'm bad, but I have to do things as my conscience, my conscience moves. And if my conscience tells me this is what I believe is right, because we're we're approaching these situations where we're having to make some pretty serious decisions about the people we're around, the things that they're doing and what we believe. And if Veronica believes that this person is unjust and this person isn't who she thinks they are that they're malicious in some way veronica has to operate in a way where she does what's to you know the level of her own consciousness conscience conscience so you have to decide you know what i believe this this is the truth and i believe that i should operate this way erica might have a whole different belief about the scenario but I have to go with what's going on in my heart, right? If, if if I believe that this person is righteous and just and I feel in my heart, then I have to move on my level of consciousness. And so I think sometimes we all make different decisions about certain things. And I gotta let you do you because you're basing that on your heart and your conscience, right? And so like you just said, your, your heart is light, it's a feather, like I'm doing the right thing. It's not for me to judge you, uh, your heart. It's not for me to judge all your decisions. And I think we kind of see people operating in a way where they think they know all the truths that there are, and they think they know all the answers when we really know dick about shit, okay? That's where, until you die. You know, we can have all the premonitions and all the like, we're still really just reaching around in the dark and we're just trying to do the best that we can. But we have such a uh, such a high level of. How do you say judgment upon each other? Like. This person's going now, this person's not going to make it, this person's not going to ascend. this person so judgmental. On the subject, I'm just gonna say one time I've already talked about this before. Uh -uh. But one thing I do not consent is pedophiles on shows. That's all I'm gonna say. I've already talked about this person and people in general. If they're going to, I don't care if it's a something that's oh, I but it was just oh, you know, I just I just put down her pants, you know. I mean, come on. Oh, it was just a spanking, really. <laughs> why is your pedophile uh, range? Why is your picture all over? Why are the records showing that you did something? If you are innocent, you should not be there. Okay? Now, I'm done with that. My thing in life is be good to yourself, be good to others. As long as no one's hurting anyone's children, and, and dogs and cats, you know what I'm saying, plants, we got to be lovable. Like, the other day, I, I heard a little boy tell me, miss, even when I was a police officer, they'd say, miss, I'm like, ma'am to you, or officer so and throw a tone, I'm, I'm not miss, <laughs> but you know, kids would be like, miss, um, 
you know these kids over there they're putting lollipops on 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 cats's tails i'm like what oh hell no you know and I have a cat that I let outside, and then the other day she came in kind of sticky. And I'm like, hell no, I'm going to be over there with the kids, and I'm going to say, I love you guys, but don't be putting no lollipops on the tails of, you know what I'm saying? It's like, yes, I know as kids, we were programmed to, you know, things that we're not supposed to, but when you're conscious and awake now, whether you are 10 years old, and you, you know what's right and wrong. You know Let me run this by you. Now, the other day, because I feed all the cats, the raccoons, the possums, the peacocks, right? So the possum came through and he was so, uh, girl, he had half a tail and he fell over in the yard. He drank some water, got himself back up and, and left. And it just made me think about, like, I know a dog got him. I pray to God that was a dog um, and not a person, but a dog got him. And it made me think about, because I have a garden back there, all the peacocks come out there. I'm going to tell you what they do. They eat the cat food off my porch, and then they go over there and eat the peppers. And I'm like, okay, so they think this is Golden Corral, and that they can come eat the cat food, and then they go over to the salad bar, and they go eat the food out of my garden, because oh this my is God. Golden Corral. This is Golden Corral. And <laughs> the peacocks... You know, they, they do whatever they want. So that means probably, I don't know if I got something that raccoons eat over there. I don't know who all is eating out of the garden. And so I was in uh, this Jamaican buffet place and the man said, yeah, when they come to my garden, I shoot them. And I thought, I'm not so hard up for peppers that I won't go to the store and I'm going to shoot a raccoon. That is like the last, like, I and I thought about it and I said, this this is the kind of person, like if you shoot an animal, a cat, a dog, a raccoon, a possum, then that's the person that would probably shoot me too. If times got rough or if there was, you know, like, there you go. You know, if the lights go out, I think people just kind of assume that we're surrounded by these good people, but because we wear clothes and we have electricity and nice cars, but if something should happen and the grid goes down, like there's some really cutthroat people out here that if they would kill an animal, they would kill me. That's how I felt. That's what went through my mind. Yeah, I agree. So, you know, people kind of joke about it, but I'm like, no, in Florida, whenever it's a hurricane, you'd be very careful at the gas station because people will pull a gun on you for gas, okay? So there's just some different kind of people in the world, you know, that we have to be very careful with. But like you're saying, if your heart and your conscience are clear, then whatever decision you made about that particular situation, I have to ride with that. It's a lot of people right now deciding I'm in or I'm out. and I have to ride with it with your conscience. But this goes to what we were talking about before because we got like an army of one, right? And uh, I think we we continue to think. I got my that says army of one. I served. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and no, no, no soldier left behind. No soldier left behind. That's my thing too. It's like. <sighs> so, but in the beginning of this army of one, we have to think of ourselves as the collective, my collective mind, all my thoughts, my feelings, and my intellect. And um, as we be start with this army of one, like the law of one, you know, with the rod, law of one, you have to think of yourself, you, and being the universe. So let me gather my universe. Let me gather what it is that I no is right. My morals, my values, and my beliefs. And once I get, I can gather these all together and I have to figure that out. And I think before I can go be a part of any group or collective, I have to figure out inside myself during this journey, who am I and what is it that I actually believe and what, what are the most important things uh, to me Right. And how it is, how is it that I conduct myself, how I treat people? 
And so when I figured that out, now I can read your books and now I can watch your shows and then I can decide, does this resonate with me? Yeah, without having to ask people, who do you think I am? <laughs> All right. Well, what do you think I should do? Because right. I really have come to this point too where I'm telling people, instead of you asking me what, you, what I think you should do, what do you think you should do? And kind of... Don't, don't, don't think that you, everyone is relying on you. People need to rely on themselves and any teacher that we have, any healer that we have, they need to be getting you to the point where you're standing on your own two feet, making decisions on your own and deciding who you are, because you don't want to be uh, an exact duplicate of someone else. Yep. Figure yeah. out who you are first. Yeah. And yeah. that way you can decide what you're putting in mentally, physically, whether that resonates with you. I don't need to make sure that I align with Veronica. I have to see who I am and see does Veronica align with me? But you were doing the card. So, but real quick, before I show the card, so that what we're talking about, you said something earlier before we started recording, you said, and I go <clears throat> singular. When you said singular, I was telling you that the word singularity popped out because two days ago, I was like, okay, if I am a star or I come beyond from beyond the stars, this picture, five, six, whatever, point, however many point a star, right? A star. And that's me. And if I open my star up, I see other stars inside. And that's me. That's my collective. That's that's the singularity that that I belong to, which is me. All those are me. <clears throat> it could be funny that you said that. It could be my part of my kids because my kids, I know they're always with me forever and ever. They so are. this is what they call you, right? A star seed. So somebody made a comment about a mustard seed the other day, and I was thinking about it. A mustard seed is so compact. There's no room inside the mustard seed for any extra bull crap, right? It's just enough to make what? Another universe. It's just enough because they said have faith is, is, is the size of a mustard seed. Well, a mustard seed is so tiny, but you plant a mustard seed and see how many mustard seeds can come from one mustard seed, right? It's, it's enough DNA, enough memory, enough life force that it can create an infinite supply of mustard seeds. And you are a star, what? Seed. An infinite enough supply inside you to create an endless supply of star seeds. And a universe and a multiverse, and you can go on and on and be right. Because then you started talking about DNA and the, your kids. Because where did your kids come? Me. <laughs> came out of you. <laughs> and then your kids' kids and your kids' kids and the kids' kids. So you are a star seed. So you are here to plant more star seeds. Now, we don't go converting star seeds. There you go. Have you found Jesus today? <laughs> <laughs> right. Because you can't convert someone into a star seed, but you can no. certainly create more star seeds and That's you can support beautiful. star seeds. Yeah. See, this you whole thing about with star you, seeds. You saw that video yesterday, right? Which, by the way, guys, was taken down from YouTube, but follow me on Rumble. No lie, five minutes before we started talking, I called her and I said, did you see your video? I thought they took the whole channel down. Like, that was scary. I was like, oh my God. Girl, that's like, how many, they've taken down so many videos. I'm like, oh my gosh. But you know, what's funny is that they're still on Rumble and they're still on Odyssey. But it's interesting that they don't take down the channel. They've just gotten to starting to take down videos. Just that, that's nice at least. At least it's not B word, you know, you can't say that. You can't say the thing that's backward OG, you know, the stuff that's in the baby jabberwockies and it's right. What happens is YouTube has a as all the techies know out there, it has an AI that grabs words and then it's sent to a person, a real person. 
TikTok, actually, I have a neighbor who her daughter works for TikTok. And they have on-site psychiatrists and psychologists because of the shit that they see on TikTok. They have, they, you know, so they're, they're not, not only are they trying, they're trying to help, you know, uh, kind of monitor the TikTok app, but at the same time, they're being programmed to, they're being assaulted, we'll say, in their mind, you know, the people that, you know what I'm saying? So it's, it's, it's like another program to a program to a program. They're, they're analyzing what's happening to the people that are on TikTok, Facebook, whatever, the metaverse that they belong to, right? When you're on Instagram, checking your Instagram or your YouTube, that's that's another, that's AI feeding on you. And so how many times are you going to be feeding AI a day? And then by the end of the day, you're so tired, you've given away your loose, your energy, your gold, right? And so get it real quick before I forget. Um, the only reason why I said have you given your life to Jesus here, it's Zeus, is because why are they so shiny? That's what we were talking about yesterday in the video. It's like this wannabe God entity is so shiny and mighty. The eyes are, you know, they're like flame eyes. And it's like, yeah, because they've taken and eaten other people's souls. Voluntarily, people have given away their heart to these Mayan gods. Are you talking about the shining ones? The shiny ones. Yeah, you guys got to look at the movie. Love and Thor. Love and, um, yeah, because it's Thor. It's Thor. The <laughs> I just saw Jimmy, Jimmy Lee's page and she was... Who? Jimmy Lee. She just got this saying, so-and-so got it wrong again. Like <laughs> She was basically talking about the gods and stuff like that. And I was, I was kind of worried last year too. I was like, wait a minute. Why would I want to raise so-and-so? Because that's that's the person who is in the Bible. That would be who they call the angry and jealous God. And I'm like, why do I want to fuck with the jealous and angry God? I want I want the happy one, <laughs> the loving, forgiving, original creator of creators who allows you to choose and be. Oh, God. Oh, gosh. Can you hear me or no? Yeah, I can hear you. There's like an echo. Um, and who is that? That's you. That's your inner creator, you. And that's the star that I'm talking about. You create what you want inside that star. And then you go. That's yeah. And when you fall, that creates life. That's how we came in. Okay. The, I know I came in through the sun. And yesterday I received my star chart from this lovely lady. Uh, she wants to be called, uh, what is it here? They, something they, if you guys are interested or whatever. Let me just find it real quick. Oh, da, 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 da. And it said that I'm a star, that I, that I, I mean, that I come from the sun. I'm a sun child. And I knew it. Yeah. I, I'm just like, I love the sun all the time. Another galactic super center. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. So that makes sense. So if you want your star chart, it's going to be Blaze Bay, B-L-A-Z-E-B-E-Y. And you guys can see the video yesterday and find out all that information yesterday. And today we're with Erica, and we're going to read this card here. And you're going to show all, I want you to show, after I read this, I want you to show the people what you just made for, for your teacher. Okay, so this one is the Seven of Wands that came out uh, reverse. It doesn't take much to turn a good situation bad. And right now, you may have done the very thing that has flicked the switch, stomping your feet in frustration and be, being ornery. Ornery? Ornery? Ornery. Yeah. Ornery will only make things worse. Then again, maybe stirring the pot <laughs> and causing trouble is exactly what you need <laughs> and hope to do no. it. So it's like you got to stir your own pot. I'm wow. What is this called? The Smurf. Oh, it's just making me think too, because I mean, if you're talking about like a microcosm or a star in a universe, like what all you can have inside of a stew, you know what I mean? Like you got to have the meat and the potatoes and got to have some spices and some seasonings, got to have some, you know, some vegetables. 
you know, and if you mix up just the right ingredients, you know, all the flavors that hit your tongue and you can just go through, you know, and live this savory life and yeah. mix yeah. it up and live this savory, beautiful life. Without having to depend on, on like, what do others think of me? And this is something yeah. that has been given to us as a program since we're little. Because if the teacher didn't think that you were good enough, they wouldn't even choose you to go play soccer. You would just be sitting there like, or if you were special, like they did with me, they put me in ESL classes and they thought they made me think that I was dumb up until I was a junior in high school. And I got into all these upper classes and I got me a 3.0 my junior year at the University of Arizona. You know, but it's because they can't control us. We're stars that will not conform. We're at a higher level of thinking, but they then they say, oh, you're schizophrenic. No, it's just we don't belong here. We're just here. We're here to grow. The, that, that's, that's been the toughest thing is like watching, like as a star seed, you grow up and you're looking at people like, why are you doing this? how can you hurt people this way? Or how can you do this? The level of bullying, the level of, I just told someone today was, is it really evil or is it just the amount of emptiness? It's some, uh, some there's a lack in there. And sometimes too, I just look at people and their actions and it just seems like there's a void and that void leaves room for the evil, I guess. But it's such a huge void inside a lot of people. Yes, and but then that's why they crave so much attention. They crave it. I was telling my son the other day. We walked into this place, and this girl was like, "Oh my god, you know, my phone." And she was acting so crazy, girl. It was crazy. I was like, "Oh my god, this girl needs help." And she kept looking at us. It was like she wanted us to make eye contact with her, and she wanted this attention. And I said, you know, when people, when you're like a star seed or when you're different or special, you walk in a room, people can sense that energy when you walk in and they're like, oh, something different. Just the same way like zombies can smell fresh blood. And so when you're different and you're not giving them that attention that they want and, and acknowledging them, worshiping them in some way, they sense it. And then they will begin to attack. And that's how the bullying starts at school is you're different. Because I could tell you, my son could have been, when he was two, I remember the longest time, other kids, bigger kids that just sensed that he was different. And immediately, how would a kid walk up to me and, and, and you know, make comments about me, about my, to me, about my own kids? Because they're just so frustrated with he's just different. And as something triggered in them, the same way with love energy, when you have an abundance of love energy inside of you, people who don't have it are irritated by that. They want you out of the space. They want you to either convert to their mindset. So they're going to start telling you all the things that they think and how they feel. And they want you to either convert to their side or they're going to try to destroy you and move you out of their space because we always think as these people with this amount of love energy that we're the ones who are hurting, but not really understanding that our energy actually frustrates them. And it's yeah. kind of in the way where you're talking about the eyes, they're trying to say that God's eyes are so bright that it would burn us. Like your, <laughs> love, your love energy is so bright, it burns people. Yeah. How can yeah. people be so angry about you being nice or good or giving compliments or being a good giver? You can think about your relationships. If you've ever been in a relationship with a narcissist, they hate the fact that you're nice yes. and they it's it's like something that they want to like stamp out of you you know that that the more the more kind you are the more they either just want to dispel you or destroy you in some way so it's not just you being weird and and being weak or anything like that and that's why love is a superpower right because I can say if me and Veronica are beefing and she sends me evil and I send her evil, we can go all day, right? But when my superpower is love and forgiveness and I can take the energy, I know she put a spell on me and she or she cursed me <laughs> and I can say, God, I love her and I'm going to send this off into the light. Somehow all that negative energy is dissipated 
by my love and by the love of the creator source who can convert that negative energy into positive energy and send it on out throughout the universe. And now I took all, my son said, you can't fight fire with fire. That's stupid. <laughs> actually, you can actually fight fire with fire because the fire that we have, it burns with love. And because we've been through all that shit, all the jealousy, you know, because when you're kids, you're jealous of, oh, I'm jealous of my sister. I have to be number one on my mom's, you know, agenda. You're jealous. Maybe you're jealous of whatever when you're growing up, you know, because you have those programs. But what happens is you've already burned those programs in you. You've already dealt with the demons and you've faced them face to face and say, you will not, you will not overpower me. Let me understand what's going on with you, which is me, you know. Why why is there anger and darkness? Let's let's figure this out. And then boom, fire. You know, this is our love. Maybe it's the violet flame or or the blue flame. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. Like it's that just, blue flame. That's the blue flame is I think the blue flame is actually hotter than the white flame. You, or the um the red yeah, flame. You yeah. know that? Yeah, yeah. 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 The when you when you have a lighter and what is yeah. The blow torch is blue. And so the blue flame, which I think the white one is the the white light is probably the most powerful. But yeah, it's interesting that we're, we're talking about that too, because the, it's it's actually amber. The one on the bottom, the blue flame is actually not, it doesn't burn you as much as a it does burn yeah. not as much as the we're at to get somebody in the notes. Oh <laughs> somebody in the in the in the comments, you get back with us and tell us about this blue, red, white flame. I had somebody talking a lot of trash about that. But um yeah, it's it's just really okay. I you know, I was I was being trapped in my dreams a few years ago when I wouldn't use the name of J E S U S. And they told me that I had to use it in a dream to get out. And I'm like, I'm not gonna use it. Like I'm not, that's not, I don't believe in that. It's, I have my own name, right? And then, oh gosh, I lost my trail of thought. Oh yeah. And then they would say, well, then then I would do, like in 2016, I was doing like this uh, golden flame and then I would do the violet flame. And I'm like, oh great. Now that's giving into Saint Germain crap, you know? And it's like, I don't want, to me, I, that's just me guys, okay? I've been able to to let go of all the layers that are programmed because once you let like you know when you you become an awakened and whatever you know you, you remember who you are you have to get let go of all these layers but then you got all these layers in the love and light community they're like well you have to do this you have to do that and I don't gotta do no meditation with the whole world because how do you know if somebody else is doing something cynical or satanic within that light so to me is what I'm trying to say. I don't depend on anything else but me because of what I've been through as a star seed here on earth. Okay. I can't. I don't trust the angels. I know some people do. Okay, great. I don't trust any entity. You know, I can talk to them like Anubis. Anubis is really cool. I talk to him, but uh, he's he's really cool. He's very fair too, but um, I don't fall into, you know what I'm saying? Because if we come from beyond the stars, why are we going to get hooked up on this stuff here? Because it's a program. That was the most, when, when, when you imagine that, so it's easy to, like people say, worship Jesus and not really like see him as a guide or an example, if this is a person who's an example for you, he had wise words for you. And yeah, it was weird sometimes too, with like with the baptism to say, um, you can only get to God through Jesus. And it was like, oh, like it, it would always be this like, oh, like the little weird feeling having to say that out loud. And uh so yeah, I get that. So people are not really understanding that, but they're to say Jesus is God and he's part of the Holy Trinity. But then when you get to understanding, if you came from a whole nother planet, then what does that make Jesus? Like you see, like it, it kind of changes like your perspective. It has to on what exactly Jesus is, but 
I won't go deep into that, but it just, people, you know, are operating on different levels of belief. And I was actually talking to Jonathan about this because Jonathan and I, I keep meeting so many people who were Jehovah's Witness. And so it seemed like everything we learned as Jehovah's Witnesses prepared us for 2020. <laughs> because they're like, don't get blood transfusions. Now, mind you, it shocked me that a lot of Jehovah's Witnesses were getting juice during the Holocaust, right? The medical Holocaust in 2020. Because I was thinking like, wait a minute, of all people who they said, don't, you know, no blood transfusions, don't take the medications, don't watch movies, don't stay away from television. They were already telling you like, stay away from all these things that we in you know, we're suddenly waking up to knowing like, oh, this shit really is mind programming and toxic. And so we also realized that the last test would be to walk out of the church as well, because I'm not telling people to do what you do, but when in this case of us all being Jehovah's Witness, we all saw that the last door that we needed to open to escape the programming was actually the church that we were in who taught us to look and watch and see and separate yourself from the world. And then we had to turn, turn the same goggles that they just gave us and turn it onto the church and say, oh, you're also a part of the program. I mean, the creator or founder of the Jehovah's Witness Church was buried in a pyramid thing, you know, like, I don't know what you call it the little, the tomb, he was buried in like, a, yeah, he was buried in a pyramid tomb. Not only that. Um, you know why? Because he's the, the, of the Egyptians and also the Egyptians have the belief of, of the um, Masons and yeah. they hold the energy and then Scientology, Ronald Hubbard. They're all, if you go back and look at the beginning of all the major religions, all of them are Masons. It was as if five people got together and said, hey, I got a really cool plan on how to fuck up and divide the world. You do this one, I'll do this one, we'll do this one. And we're gonna create, even the Mormons, we're gonna create all of these things and we're gonna, you know, you take this section, I'll take this section, I'll take this section. And we're going to divide people. And every one of us is going to tell the other one that we're all going to hell if you don't do this, if you don't do that, you know. And so if you go to Church of Christ, they're going to tell you that you cannot tell me that every Catholic person is going to hell. You cannot tell me every Buddhist is going to. I don't I will. That would be the last thing that I understand that you could just say because I don't go to this particular church that you're all going to hell. But then you're going to tell me this when your religion only started in about 18, somewhere between 1890 and 1910. So you're brand new religion on the earth. And I would ask people, so when Jesus was alive, what church did he go to? Can you name it? So how can every church come out and say, we are the one and only true church when he didn't go to a church? He went to someone's house for a meeting. <laughs> I mean, his disciple was Mary Magdalene, which is his wife. So most definitely. Some people were talking about this the other day, like, oh, I thought he he died. But then you have to understand, too, that these were people who were practicing metaphysics. He's like the, the you know, a major Reiki healing type person. And that a lot of people today would say, oh, He's going to hell. You know, Moses, they would say a man threw down a, a, a stick and it turns into a snake. They're going you're, they're going to say that he's going to hell. Right. That's what they're going to say. He's doing magic. Not understanding like, no, he's doing metaphysics. He's doing alchemy. And so Jesus, the same Mary Magdalene, the same that when they put that vinegar in his face, I honestly think that was to knock him out so that he would be all the way knocked out. And when they took him down there, he wasn't all the way dead. No, and that he did go on and move, but that these people have such a, a, a greater story than what we know. 
and now we're just getting these little thin slices of a story and and it's like here but i guess too what will blow me away too is that a person can be a christian and they go to such and such church and you're reading a book and you have no idea where the book comes from you don't know who translated it and you don't know where did they take these different sections? Because each section is taken from a different period of time and it's pushed all into one book. Can you imagine a book that it took 10,000 years to write? That it's, this is from the year 10,000 BC and this is from the, so, so much is changing and so much is, is, is transforming. The names of the different God is changing. The name Yahweh has sh- changed. You can actually El- Elo- Elohim has I didn't know Elohim could mean landlord. Yeah. Like like it yeah, can exactly. and, and so it, it's like, but they're trying to make it into one person, but this isn't one person that they're talking about. This isn't one God that they're talking about. This is like it's just amazing how how people can have such surety about their lives based on something that they don't even know where it comes from. And it just it just really blows my mind. So, reading the, uh, the Book of the Dead, if you look at the Dynasty Two, the Second Dynasty, um, they actually found they they it's been changing. It's now it's this god, now it's the name of that god, and now it's but it's all based on Egyptian mythology, all of it. Yeah. You know, a really good thing um, to watch, too, is the law of the sun. And they pretty much go through life on Mars and Venus and how they come here and basically uh, come in here as light bodies, not with physical bodies, how they started life on Venus. Then it was part plant and part animal. And then coming here, kind of doing the same thing starting off as the breathitarians and then they and then it makes sense that the garden of eden they ate fruit and now you became physical form right now remember who was, according to the terror papers who was in that garden of eden the anunnaki had to take care of these new humans or humanoids I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not even sure how much of it that I actually so, believe. So what? Yeah. And now, you know, it's why the white god, the aliens, the ones from the 15th dimension, or whatever. That I see a lot of people fighting about um this, I'm um, that because this one is white and this one's not white, and I'm like, why are we fighting over? If the person if the person was white, not that you are, but I'm just I'm just like, what the hell? <laughs> I, I'm talking about food and I'm talking yeah. about the digestive system. Me, I was born in Mexico, so you know, every summer I was there drinking the water, eating food that didn't, you know, wasn't used, you know, the, the thing that's insecticide, what else insectic, whatever, the crap that they put on there. I would eat food that was left over a, a, a day outside and it wouldn't affect me, okay? That's my fauna and flora in my digestive system. I have a very strong digestive system. But then you got the white, Pleiadian or Anunnaki or the different races that have tried to brainwash us saying, you gotta be more white. You gotta eat white flour, white rice, that's part of the agenda. And it's part of the 300 family, 13 family, you know, the pyramid, you know, that they have. This is so cool that you said that because I guess this one, that's a connection I made with um, with listening to Alex Collier talk about the cataclysm that came, right? Because there was green people on the planet. There was more magnesium and there was copper. You had green blood. And green blood. And so, we came into the Iron Age, right? Well, what are people trying to get us to do right now is have iron enriched food. And all the iron enriched food is what you're saying is white flour and iron that's making people sick. Because they don't have they don't have the the copper, enough copper and iron in their blood. Okay, so they're trying to, they want to make us sick. They want to make us forget that our ancestors, what we ate, our body structures, like I, look at us. I have a huge, like, I'm big right here. I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. 
and I got good long legs and I'm going to trip you, you know? Uh, it doesn't mean that I have to have a fat booty or fat thighs because my body structure is different from other people because my people were in, in we're, we were hunters. A lot of us were hunters and, and you know, everything I have like this thing where the mortar, we would make everything. I mean, you're ancestors too, so we're related. But what's happening is some of us were mixed with the white. I, I have German blood, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> I shouldn't say unfortunately, but you know what I'm saying. German, oh. Irish, <laughs> yeah, German, Irish, Scottish, yeah. Yeah, so we got the Celtic, you know, the red, because we do have red. When my daughter has to help me buy makeup, because she, she's a makeup person, like an expert, mom, your face is, you have, you have yellow, mom. You have like almond yellow. Well, that's because when I was born, like I said the other day, you know, I was born with the purple, which is the, the yellow and the blue bloods, which is uh, Merovingian. Yeah. You know, people need to understand what they I come from, their body structure, what they eat, what doesn't go with them. You Just because you, you're told to be vegetarian, I try to be vegetarian, my hair is falling off. No, I'm all negative, baby. No. I interviewed Sal March, and he's a very good dietitian. And I've witnessed it myself that when I saw, you know, I was around a particular person, I could see their body shaking and I could see the dark rings around their eyes. But, you know, a long time ago, I read that book, Eat Right for Your Blood Type. And I think that makes a huge difference. But even when you have your blood type saying your blood type is O positive or whatever it is, you have to remember that there's a punit square that your mom gives you two and your dad gives you two. And so the dominant one shows up, but then you still have like a, 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 a non-dominant a recessive. So even when it comes to our eye color, here it is what appears to you as blue eyes, but there's still like, you know, other recessive genes that, you know, are still up in your DNA. And so you could have two blue eyed people who have a brown eyed kid or like my brother and my sister-in-law, you know, they're both darker than me. And they had a child with red hair, a blue and born with a blue eye and a green eye and light skin. And that was a really fun day. You yeah. know, people are like, well, I know she's his cause she got his feet and his forehead, <laughs> but it was like, where did this child come from? But um, because yeah, the Nephilim, the Nephilim bloodline is the redheaded. Because I have red hair, I was born with blonde hair, okay, and then turned red. So the Nephilim is red hair, green eyes, and the white, which is the Anunnaki or whatever you want to call them, the Alpha Draconis, right? Um, they have blonde hair and blue eyes. So, and then not only that, when you're talking about blood. We got also non-secretors. I'm a non-secretor, so I'm going to need more protein than the other person. You know what I'm saying? So Right. Uh, We're going to talk about this with Scott on the 30th, because Scott, no, Scott no, no. Um, Savoy, man, I, I loved all the research that he did. Um, and he was working with, you know, some other people and. I wanted to talk about this because I saw a lot of people too, because they were talking about Ramses II being born and he had red hair and green eyes. And I guess my thing with the, the young lady who wanted to say, I guess, cause she specifically said he was not black just to bust everybody's bubble. And I was thinking, okay, if you wanted to state a fact, you can state a fact, right? If he was born this way, but it was the way that she said to bust everybody's bubble, he wasn't black. And I was thinking to myself, like, I don't know, was there a consensus that all, you know, of Egypt was black? Because I guess what a lot of people are feeling that I think a lot of people are feeling left out because they feel like their race or culture is being left out of what we're saying the beginning of civilization is. But when you, when you're, people are the ones that pretty much make all the books and decide that that everyone is looks like you like think about every superhero you know was white until what you could say black panther or you could say when they made uh the eternals and then the first person that they made uh, and then he had to be gay and right right 
and you know and overweight and so it was like oh he's a non-intimidating black guy got it okay so i guess my thing was this too when you think about ramses and all those people people weren't racist back then they weren't like oh we're all white like they, this thing about even the being called white did not happen until like the 1680s then we decided you know someone decided hey let's um call these group white and this group black white would have been like white magic black magic or energy it have been you know but i used to tell people too like i'm not a crayola so don't call me black like it was just so weird for someone to call you black because do i look black like the color black to you no so in these things say ramses the second again he married 200 women do you think, oh, because he had red hair and green eyes, do you think he just married a bunch of red-haired, green-eyed people? No, he married a hundred all different vanilla chocolate, you know, like, yeah, so, second, which is interesting because of one of my um, family members that I found on Ancestry, he said he traced the Ancestry back to An Ramses the third, And so he's saying, well, Ramses the third is a melanated comet person. And I said, well, yeah, well, Ramsey II married a hundred women. So it's, of course, you know, I, I think, you know, even when it comes to certain very well published authors who want to claim the Mary Magdalene bloodline of the royal bloodline, which, and, I, and then I get real funny when people say royal, why do you feel like you're a royal bloodline because you're Anunnaki bloodline or this bloodline? Like what makes that royal? Exactly. What do you exactly. mean by that when you're calling yourself royal? Now here's my argument to this. If Genghis Khan lived a thousand years ago and one in 200 people are related to Genghis Khan, that's just a thousand years and one in 200 people are related to him. Take it back 10,000 years. Do you not think that in 10,000 years, by now we all have in this Punit Square, you got a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And to prove how weird this shit is, I have a, a person related to me on Ancestry. My brother is on Ancestry. My sister's on Ancestry. I got half siblings on Ancestry and I got cousins on Ancestry. And then my grandmother's uh, sister's kids are on Ancestry. So my mother and my father, both my grandmother and grand aunt are all on here. And then my actual siblings are on here. There's a man on there related to me and nobody else. I know who my father is. Me and my brother, the DNA is on Ancestry that says me and him are related. How can I connect to this one guy and he doesn't connect to anybody else? You got it in you. It's in there. No one is special -er or royal -er. And just because you got the notes, like they used to say when my grandma was growing up, mama's babies, papa's maybes, just because something, <laughs> you know, you can say that your bloodline is royal. Men like to, and women like to, we all like to get down. This is a planet, um, you know, this is, you know, this is why aliens love it here, right? This is a weekend, you know, get down, get down, because people here like to have sex, aliens like to have sex, and all of these people are all mixed up. But why is yours more special? I believe that the, the O negative is it has to do with the original humans that have ET DNA. Um, now, then we all we're all we're all a mix. You're right. We're all a mix. It's just there. It's something to do. All it is is that the O negative go in and you fight. You fight. You get shit done, and then the O positive or the positive. Right. O's are warriors. A's are lawyers. Huh? O's are warriors and A's are lawyers. They're the legal mind. But if you want the fight, bring it to an O positive and you're going to see it. Right. You got it. You know what yeah. I mean? You got it. Um, you're right. Very right. The A's. I love it when Scott talks about this. I think it's on the 30th. We're going to do that. 
the, uh, send me the link because I want to listen. I mean, I would love to. Maybe you need to come on there and talk smack. Mm -hmm. I would. All right. I'm going to hang out with Tyler Koala soon, too. All right. That is awesome. Uh, okay, this is uh, Sun God number 21. Number 21. 21. And today's a 23. 23 and me, it equals a six. 23 and me. <laughs> 23 DNA. and me. Five, meaning that we are changed. Today is number five. You want to change something in your lab? You do it right now because it's number 23. It means five. 23. 23. We're gonna do du dueling um cards because I'm a, I'm a this this deck when we when she gets done I'm gonna do this deck this I don't pull cards they fly out so this is gonna be fun anyway go ahead and do your cards real quick real quick okay so action celebration a positive outlook and this is from this book here. A positive. <laughs> a positive outlook. Yep. Action, celebration, a positive outlook. With this yeah. card, the regal energy, <laughs> the regal energy of the sun god mandala has landed by your side. This mandala holds the powerful energies of Ra, the sun god, and all he represents, the energy of vitality, strength, power, and confidence delivered via the golden ray brings a renewing life, force, and a new life to all the shadows that have crept into your world. So go outside, get yourself some DNA code. <laughs> okay, your turn. <laughs> get into this sun. Um, yeah, yesterday, that was really great. Um, you guys talk about sex. And the sex of people. Let's talk about. Did you know that they got a sex change scholarship now? What? Oh my gosh! No, they didn't. Are you serious? There's a <laughs> it's a scholarship for your sex change. Well, because when you get your sex change, you need all your ID changed. So the scholarship is so that you can get your driver's license, birth certificate, everything switched over, and stuff like that. But I just, I think it's interesting what people are finding time to do. For instance, another cool fact, there is a tampon tax. Tax? Yes. Tax. So in certain states, a few states, they've decided, because people got time, people got all day to, to screw around, to, to decide that because you have a period, you should not have to pay for the taxes on tampons. Wow. This is what happens when you watch a cartoon. Let me tell you, <laughs> when you watch a, a cartoon. So we were watching um, Coraline and I'm babysitting. I'm watching, I'm watching Coraline is a kid's movie and we're babysitting. I'm babysitting and um, I'm gonna let the cars fly out. And, uh, my little 12 year old, my son's cousin's over here and stuff's busting out about tampon tax. And he's like, what? And then the next one that pops out is there's the Venus Razors. Uh, a commercial comes on and it says pubic hair. And I was like, what the? Sh and the little boy backs away from the computer. He's like, pubic hair. I'm like, so embarrassed. Like, why are we having a, a, a pubic hair talking on a razor commercial? Because it says no one ever wants to talk about what goes on down there. We want to talk about pubic hair. <laughs> like, like, I don't watch regular TV, but I swear to God, if you hit, you know, a commercial, it always just feels like people are on acid. When they make this, is this is made for people that are on acid, but... Yeah, and it just makes me wonder. So we we had legislature where people are voting about tampon taxes, but this is the world. This we're it's all right. right. Oh, so, this is gonna be our collective readings, right? So the first one is about core values. Isn't that funny? Because we talked about getting to the root, right? And it's a, and we talked about your heart. Follow your heart and make your values a priority. So basically, going right back to how we began this conversation, 
figure out who you are inside you, figure out what your core values are. Do not try to align with people. Try to find people that align with you. As people come around you, do they align with you? Now we're not talking about casting judgment, but we're talking about stop trying to force yourself into a group or be a part of the group. Be You are the group. Align, when, when this group is aligned, then you can allow other people to be in the group. And we even talked about before the camera started is that we could be friends with people individually. I might really like, you know, you. And let's just say power lady, because I do want to meet her. I saw her all this time. I thought you were the power lady. And I was in the group. I was like, I thought she was power lady. But anyway, but maybe me and power lady don't click. It's okay for me to be friends with Veronica. I don't have to shove myself into a group. But maybe if I focus on just me, the power of one, the army of one, and then take people on an individual basis and decide on an individual basis to me and this person click. You know, and it, it, it you know what I even thought about? You will like her. <laughs> this, oh, I know I will. I mean, she's very intelligent. I got some questions about this bank stuff. With it, there's a saying, it says you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. Now you think of that if we were horses and I knew where the water was. And every day I'm like, Veronica, I gotta get this one. And I'm like, well, bitch, if you don't want no water, you can sit right here and start. I'm gonna go get this water. But every day when I come back all juicy and sweating and I can afford to sweat and I got water dripping on down my cheeks and you like, damn, are we over here dry? Where are you getting all this water from? And now you're going, I'm going to say, well, she, I told you, you know, I went down to the water hole and you're like, okay, well, let me go. And then you tell Bernadette, Bernadette say, girl, y'all don't know what y'all talking about. Well, then when me and you come back all sloppy and wet with this water coming down our faces, we can afford to sweat. Other people will be like, oh, well, where the water? At? Like, I don't have to make you drink the water. I can know what I know. And when you see my life, improving and changing and you see me growing and glowing and doing the things that I really want to do, you're going to want to know where the water at, Erica. So I can, I don't have to lead everyone to the water and I can't make them drink. Just keep drinking. Keep drinking the water by yourself and knowing where you go, you know, where you want to go in life. And then, you know what? Self-limiting or limiting beliefs. A lot of us are struggling with self-limiting beliefs. So this is things that are taught to us by our parents. The situation calls for reprogramming your beliefs. Oh, I'm telling you, it's like, why are we having this conversation, right? Fix your beliefs, especially your limiting beliefs. This what did that say? Said, oh, crap. I'll, I'll let you finish yours real quick. It says, full moon, number 29. It's an 11. So 11, 11, 11, you know, guard the gates of your mind. Whenever I see that number, what am I thinking about? What am I thinking about? It says, full moon coming to fruition. Rewrite your story <laughs> and shift in consciousness. Right. So, and we just got through talking about religion and limiting beliefs. It's out. It's time for you to go in there and reprogram your beliefs. Take in, take in what is positive for you. I like a friend of mine, Devin said, program your mind to think with your heart. Now, when situations are arising, and I'm thinking, oh, this doesn't feel good. Instead of going with, oh, but that person's a doctor or that person's the, the reputation, that person's this, oh, let me go. How did that person actually make me feel? I know what the credentials say. I know that they're successful. I know that they're this, I know that they're that. They, you know, it reaches all everything on the checklist. But now what does my heart say about that person? The situation calls for you to reprogram your beliefs. We can't always go with what we see. We got to start understanding how we feel is very important. And now you go. <laughs> I was just listening to two weeks ago. I, I, I got this thing from the library. It's, it's an audio book and it's called Blink, D, like Blink in your eye, B-L-I-N-K. And uh, he was the guy that was talking about that they did a survey of the people that had actually 
uh, managed to sue their doctor as opposed to the ones that had a complaint but didn't sue them. So it has a lot to do with the doctor spending time with the patient asking legit heartfelt questions, actually being empathetic to the patient. And like we were talking about earlier, it's like a surgeon can be really, really well, really good at, you know, cutting you up and fixing you up. But if they're dicks, like I wouldn't want them touching my body. You know, like they don't even want to hear the problem. Like with my neck surgery, my back, lower back surgery was great. Yes, it took me four months to go back to the gym. This one, it, it, I was allergic, you know, to the neck thing that they did the four vertebrae. I was allergic to the, to the glue, had hives everywhere. Um, pain, I still, every night I go to bed, I have pain on this side, all this nerve. And I talked to him and he said, oh, trust me, it's because you were in the neck brace. This was a month ago. And I wore the neck brace for a month and I still have pain. And I said, there's something wrong here. I told the nurse practitioner, oh, well, you might want to do physical therapy. And I'm like, why am I going to go to physical therapy when I got the gym? So I had to go back to the gym last week. Go ahead. <laughs> no, go ahead. No, oh, no, read it, read it. It says healing with nature. Your soul yearns to be outside in nature around healing waters, flowers, and trees. Yes, yes. I love to walk. I'm just home. listening to what you're saying, and yeah, yeah. I hear that you are thing. not wanting all that cutting. You're not wanting what you want integrated healing. Like you want integrated healing. Yeah. I'm like I don't want. I don't want to go back and, and have him redo my neck. I'm just gonna heal myself. Recognize. Ooh, my number thirty three. Girl, read it. Someone deserves to be recognized for all that they do. Source. Your connection to source is the light and love that shines through you and leads the way. The last one, speaking up. That's what I, that's what I think about you. Aww. Your soul is guiding you to stand in your light and speak your truth. Yep. So good. you're like that power hitter that actually does that. Even, and this is another thing we said before we got started. Like your parents said, if everyone was jumping off the bridge, would you go jump off the bridge? No, you have to be strong enough that in the army of one, if you're the, if everybody quits, if everybody's compromised, if everybody's in the dark, if everybody's sabotaging each other, are you going to be the one person who knows what your directive is? Do you know what your directive is? Do you know what your purpose is? If you you might have to be the only one at times that has your good sense to stay in the light. You cannot allow your allegiances and your friendships to guide you. Sometimes you have to stand up against your own friends and say, no, I'm not participating in your bull. And you will find it when you're doing the right thing. A lot of times it's very freaking lonely. It's very lonely, but you have to do it. You have to make that decision. Very lonely. I think all these cards went right along with everything that we talked about today. <laughs> so, do you want to call it a day for now and then be on again another time? Or Yes, that would be lovely. Thank that would be you. lovely, of course, especially after spending a month in Egypt, I'm going to hit you up because I think um, go. bring back the archaeologists and then we can really get into some dirt about Egypt. Like, yeah. I wanted to be an archaeologist when I was fourth grade because I won that that competition in fourth grade of states and capitals me and a little boy won and the teacher Mrs. Norris took us to the theater and we saw Rangers of the Lost Ark what oh that was that was the movie that was the program that was the movie remembering all kinds of stuff the Ark of the Covenant yeah you know it's an ark yeah oh to another dimension and last night I had another dream of slides. The slides were on top of each other. I was being shot from one dimension. I was in a slide and you couldn't see the, that the slides were stacked up on each other until you went right in the middle and you're like sliding. And I saw other, other kids like me. There was a boy and a girl on one slide and it was just me on the other slide. 
and we would go and there was water and that has to do with project crystal gates i named it project crystal gates with the dolphins it has to do with when they took me at a year and eight months and then i was you know in a little petri dish and the mermaid thing and the other um the other one the other memory that's in a reoccurring memory is i'm wearing like a bikini and i'm a little girl i'm like eight eight years old and they're they're putting me in these slides that are circular plastic and boom i'm going through the walls and and it's uh, they're they're sending us to other dimensions so maybe that's the way we came into this life <laughs> to earth through the sun shoot <laughs> that reminds me of being john malkovich almost yeah exactly. got a nice little portal on being john malkovich where they they already know the baby is going to be born and they've already picked out the woman and they have a door that they go through and if there's even a diagram and it says like you can't go in before the baby reaches a certain age because you'll get trapped in the subconscious mind. It's a really cool movie. Yeah. People don't know and this conversation is that's why people, kids are born, still born because they are not ready. There's something happened to, they cut the, it, it's just not right. It did not align right. And mm. Still far because they made that decision to not come. Right. Well, some babies, some people, well, some spirits or souls, there's a contract to that, right? Like this woman has to go through a stillborn pregnancy, and this other soul wants to go through the baby in the womb experience without actually being here. So everything is a contract. Even my mom, I was uh, doing a treatment on someone the other day and I said, you know, from your perspective, your mom was really, really hard on you and you might be resentful because you can't have that mom that you expect, but your mom actually already made a deal. So your higher self and your mom's higher self are there battling this. This is how I see it. And she's like, why are you being so hard on her? And it's like, I have to do what I have to do because I have to send Veronica out into the world. She's got to go change lives. And if she's comfortable and nurtured and having so much fun and love at home, she's not going to get off her butt, leave the house and go fight. Yep. My so you went through your parents' boot camp. <laughs> So you're going through a boot camp experience and this person has agreed to do that. But can you imagine the pain? Because still, even though your mom has taken the time to give you this tough love to send you out into the world this way, and to imagine having a child that's angry with you and resentful of you and that is hurt by you, the pain of being the person that had to do endure that contract, like actually spin how we see things when we see these people that hurt us, like, man, that's a, that's a tough contract to be the bad guy. So just something. I also would tell you this too, because of anybody who was kind of going through that, where you want that mom figure or whoever that person is that really hurt you to just uh, forgive them and, and just write yourself that note or write that note. You know, I forgive you for not being the person that I expected you to be. That's like Louise Hay. On the other note, we have a council when we go into our thoughts and we talk to our gods or whoever. You can put that person's image in your, like I can put a my mom figure on my list of guides and say, what would my mom do in this situation? And maybe I consult with her higher self instead of her physical self because I can't have her in this place and I but I still miss having that person in my life in that role to actually exercise that ability to talk to her higher self instead yeah that's what I when, when you know, for advice uh, I, I teach them the inner child so I'll like for example me um I grab my inner child baby and I'm Mm. and I say it's gonna be okay and then I grow her up and then I hold her hand and then we go and we talk to my mom and in my mind and in my spirit and I say you weren't here for this little girl which is me what's your excuse and then she's sitting on a park bench and she just ignores my ass and I'm like fine so I take my little baby self I raise her again and I say I love you I love you I will be your mom don't worry about this other person yeah but I, I forgive you for not being who I expected you to be 
Yeah. We have so many expectations. Yeah. And we yeah. Want, yeah. yeah. Last night I got the star chart from the lady that I mentioned earlier, and I was crying. The first page, I was like, I was supposed to get parents that love me, not hurt me because of who I am, how I came in in the star system. Then I, girl, so the pain was real. It was real in my heart. And I was crying. I said, damn. But then if that wouldn't have happened with my parents, I wouldn't have been the mom that I am now. Yes, unfortunately, there was things that happened in my past that I hurt my kids. And now that they're older, they're able to forgive me because they see that when I finally came in, my light came in through my heart in 2017. That's the real me. And that's the real healing mom. And I love my kids. I will do anything for them to, to wake up and, and smell a coffee, you know, and be better people themselves and, and, and help others, you know, for my bloodline, I'm here to cut all those cords of injustice and pain and hurt for them. You know, I'm here for them. I'm here for you guys. Um, I can only show you how I did it through my experience. And that's why I encourage everybody, everyone to have a YouTube channel. And uh, any parting words, Miss Lady Erica, because I know your alarm went off twice. <laughs> Oh, that I think that was like uh, I don't even know what that was for. But um, in in this in this whole thing, we we're only all just doing the best that we can, right? Um, I love the idea of parenting yourself and nurturing yourself and being there for yourself to love yourself and just understanding like who who would I be without this trauma I was in a class and I I had to actually understand like think about the people who like they come out and their parents are like loving and fun and having barbecues and and they go straight through school and they don't have a problem with bullies and then they graduate and then they go to school and then they graduate and they get married and and they have these regular lives, right? And the funny thing about them are those are the other people that are on the other side of our 2020 that when you told them the truth, they couldn't see it. Why? Actually, the fact that you have the trauma is what triggers your paranormal activity. I was gonna say paranormal activity. <laughs> trauma is what triggers your psychic intuition. Because you've been traumatized, you're used to being prepared and thinking ahead and trying to predict what's going to happen, right? Because you've been trying to protect yourself all this time. So it's giving you heightened awareness and heightened sensitivity. And because you endured this abuse, that's what makes you see what others are feeling. That's what makes you empathetic. Because remember the people that aren't empathetic? The people that are like, no, you're crazy. What's wrong with you? What do you mean? Why are you complaining? Those are the people who can't sense, uh, you know, Biden could fall through your roof in your baby crib <laughs> and, and, and do whatever. And you know where I'm going with this. And they're like, no, he just, it was an accident. Like that, they are so thick and so dull because in their minds no this couldn't happen that couldn't possibly be like and you're like are you okay I just thought what and so because of the trauma it's actually the thing that shook you wide awake to see so it's like one or the other you can be like the walking dead or you can be with your eyes wide open like, and yeah. it is painful. It is painful to be here with your eyes wide open all the time. Oh, but I do just encourage people to go smell the flowers and go to parks and, you know, find hobbies and play with pets and watch funny videos and do everything you can to like nurture yourself and love yourself and enjoy yourself because. You know, even though you're here with your eyes wide open, you don't have to be plastered to every single news scene and know every single fact because you know what you know. 
understand that. Now move on with your purpose. And your purpose isn't to sit here and record every negative thing that ever happened on the planet. It's to anchor in light and to build new things. Create books like, and then create channels like she said. Uh, have talks, give hugs and kisses. Find you some love in this world and yeah, grow some love. love. We're not talking about sex and porn either, because you could be escaping the matrix but then you're over here watching porn all day. Then what happens? That's no, what happens. We're not talking about those OnlyFans and and those um. Pedophilia, right? The no, pedophilia. No Instagram. We're not talking about Instagram models. But go find, build you some real relationships and have some true love in the world. Yeah, you, we clear ourselves. Clear and have some clear. true love in the world. Yep. Clear our minds every day. Clear our mind. Clear the cachet, like I was saying yesterday. But can you please, please, please show, if you don't mind, the beautiful, beautiful art that you made for your teacher, I think? Oh, I forgot. She doesn't even know about it yet. It's so beautiful. And so I was hanging out with my friend Tampa in Tampa. Uh, and her name is Melania, like Trump's wife. And uh, so okay. we were trying to figure out what, how I can do these crowns. Oh my God. Oh, I got another crown. I can show you like two more. Since you brought out my creative. Yeah. And your earrings. And so the, the earrings I have are from Vicki Lynn. She's a Native American lady out in Canada. Ooh. Yeah, so there's this one. I like that oh, one. Hi. It's so pretty. Now, let's show this. I'm, I'm almost finished with this one. But you. Oh, my gosh. Oh, that one's uh, fun. I know, this is like some Mardi Gras type situation. Beautiful. That reminds me of the, of the peacock. Yeah. I love peacock. You look beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, I'm like a Crayola now. This uh, one of my friends is teasing me, like, you're almost 50. Why would you guys get old? Y'all want to color your hair? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because we can and we're living out loud. So beautiful. Yeah. So this is fun. I'm having fun. Did you make all those? All those what? Well, no, I go to beach shows. I'm like a pervert at the beach show. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> when I get done at the beach show, you would think I was at the mall or something. <laughs> it's like, 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 oh God, it's like, uh, it's like, uh, yeah, you would think it's, that was my sex Fifth Avenue. Like, uh, <laughs> like me and my junk journals, like when, if I go to like Hobby Lobby or you know, Michael's and it's like, I got to have my coupons or Joanne's because mm, the coupons and you know what? I make my own butterflies and my own hearts. Like, you know how they sell. I make my own everything with paper. You can do anything. And it, I, I love paper. I call myself a, a paper addict since I was a little girl. Like I was in Mexico in the summers and my tata would say, oh, well, so-and-so needs a book for school. And I'm like, tata, can you buy me this book of just paper? Just, we guess. need to do that with um power lady and some other ladies and get together and have craft night where we're like in the house doing our own crafts but like together and yeah. Yeah. i, I want to do that and we can always yeah. Too. yeah and you know telegram allows us to be all in the room on the screen at the same time too i like that Ooh, that's nice. did you know that like yeah people can pop in and pop on the thing it's like like where are you talking about? Ah, craft night Oh, yeah. like, Telegram channel, and do you have one too, right? So yeah, Women of the Stars um, chat is my chat, and then I have like uh, the pets, Hathor's pets. So Hathor's pets and comics, I have that on Telegram. Um, yeah, and I'm on there as Hathor speaks because I will be <laughs> hanging out and speaking with Hathor soon. Yes. Well, I already believed that uh, I connected with her when I was there. So I just, I was in love. I'm telling you, though, I was there a couple of days and I was like, how do I get to stay here? I got to live in Egypt, y'all. But that's actually where my Jupiter is. 
Oh, wow. So, you know, when you can do the, um, your, your astrology chart with locations, it's like astrochartpot.com. They actually show that this was the place where I would be the most, the most accepted, the most honored, the most successful in life is right there in the area where I'm going to. So I'm like, yeah, this is my, uh, oh my goodness. What is, I, I don't know why this the speaker is not working very well here. Let me have my channel back. Um, how do you know, what do you look at? Because I got, I got, I got mine last night and it says sun seven and Pisces 51. Cause I'm Pisces moon and uh, one in Paris. Did you get the one with the location on it? It actually has a map of the world. I'll send you the link. It actually has the map of the world on it. I think she, I, I have to look because I know she sent me a bunch of stuff and it, I'm still going through it. But uh, here it says that I'm in, that my Neptune is three Sag, Pluto 28, Virgo 55. The ascending is 23, Virgo 50. MC is 23, Gemini 26. What's MC, the moon? Um, I forget the words. Yeah, I'm going to have I'm gonna a second. Have this one is different. This is a strictly a map. OK, so let me send it to you on your phone. And so it's a map of the planet where they've broken it into like a flat plate. And then so you know how your star chart has the lines on the circle. They put that up against the map and they find where your lines are. OK, I'm gonna, I think she she might have sent it to me. I'll, I'm going to look and you send you send it to me yours. And then that'd be interesting how like where could I be more at peace? I mean, I love my Tucson. Don't get me wrong. I love my desert. Love it. I tried living in Hollywood. Forget about it. I lived there for. A oh, wow. Years. I mean, it was a culture oh, shock. Wow. It was cool experience. But I, I can't. Can. I, I had to come back to Tucson. I can't be that woke. It's just too much. Mm -hmm. I can't fight with anybody about pronouns. I, I can't. <laughs> so let everybody know what your email is and your YouTube. And then as soon as this is up, which will be soon, like maybe 20 minutes. On the first Lady podcast. Erica, the first Lady Erica dot com and uh, Women Out of Stars um, on on YouTube, duh. <laughs> We're gonna start, but I have my link tree link too, and it's like link tree, link tree forward slash the first lady Erica. It's super easy. So your mid, oh, your medium coli or your mid heaven is the MC. Hmm. I'm, I'm not there. So that's where your career and public image, which speaks to you professionally. But on that map, I'm not sure how it works on the map. I just know we're gonna find our Jupiter and that's the place where you find purpose and joy. Jupiter? Yeah. Jupiter, it says five slash 33. <laughs> There's my number. Five slash 33 is my Jupiter. So I have to look that. So Jupiter is the planet of luck, fortune, and success and generosity. Jupiter is expansive, big thinking, healthy, wealthy, powerful engine of achievement. You know, because you said this, yeah, I was getting something made and I said, well, don't use the planet Saturn. And the guy said, why? I said, well, you know, Saturn, black, Q, blah, blah, blah. Saturn is where you get trapped. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yep. So... I said on the rings of Saturn. So you're going around in a circle. Let me show you. Oh, let me see where this thing is. I got to find it. Let me see if it's up here. Where is Saturn? In Saturn. Yeah. With, yeah. Those, with, are actually, those are actually like the thought forms that you can get stuck on also. The rings like religion, politics, money, sex, you know, alcohol, all that stuff. That stuff. Well, when you get dizzy <laughs> on a cartoon, 
This is what they do, right? They show you the rings. Oh my gosh. So one time when the when I was at the uh, in band camp, like they say, when I was at the police academy, oh, when I had a guy, I knocked out and I saw stars and then they chanted my name and I came back. They called me the Hulk and I kicked his ass. That's what I saw. Yeah. What the hell? Maybe they send you to Saturn and they try and reprogram you and you reprogram you while you're out. You know what I'm saying? Wow. So if you get hit in the head, if you get dizzy, you see stars and you got rings of stars. And that's how they show that you're confused. And, and so the guy said, do you think they did that on purpose? I said, everything has a reason, right? I thought that was so cool. And I'm glad we got to work that in there because I wanted to show somebody that. I didn't show anybody. So I was like, oh, it's pretty that, cool. That's, that's amazing that you show. It's like an aha. Mm-hmm. And with you're the, you're the only person that listens to my little ahas, you know, because I have a lot of ahas, and people are like, "Okay, whatever." Girl, no, I think like that too all the time. And then like, <laughs> I want to record myself, or I want to go online real quick. And then imagine if I had, if I put all the aha moments, I'd have like a billion. Billion. I'm always like recording myself, like little voice memos, like remember the <laughs> note to self. We're going to talk about this with Veronica. <laughs> That's basically what happened today. I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> See, and okay, so going real quick. So you know how we, those people are the perfect goody two shoes. They're, they're also being programmed in that kind of matrix. And then what they do. That's why they know how to jump through hoops. We talked about this. Who stole my cheese, right? So for those people, they just know how to go right to the little maze and get the cheese because they're so easily programmed. People like us, I asked Chris Sinatra, why can't we just go through life, graduate, get a bachelor's degree, a master's degree, become a doctor, lawyer, or some type of scientist? And I and, and the why? Because we're weird and we start seeing injustice and we see things that we don't, we're like, wait a minute, I don't like the system because we don't like the things that we see. And so we end up bucking the system all the time. Can't stay at a job and, and treat people nasty. I can't go to school and watch bullying. I can't go to school. Let me tell you one thing. I walked out of a class when I was in college. I was in a business class and they were talking about morals and ethics. And they said, this is what you should do. But if your corporate culture tells you to do X, Y, Z, just do what they tell you to do. And I said, what kind of shit is this? And I walked out of the class because I was like, they're training us to be bean counters. Like on my own, I'm sitting here thinking, no, no. And so this is why I didn't just go through and get the business degree. I didn't agree with the things that they were teaching us. Like, mm. And here I am making the stand and that's why I'm, you know, working in the mall again, you know, that, <laughs> but anyway, yeah, even in the army, I couldn't do it. I almost fought, you know, so many people. Anyway, I threatened one of my superiors. I was like, I will knock you off this balcony. Like you, you better step back. Like I, like I had a hard time with everything. Everywhere I went, I always had a hard time. Yeah, I know. Like when I was in the police academy, I kicked, um, I'm not going to say his name. One of the sergeants, uh, they wore the padding and everything. And I, boom, I hit him in the nose. Apparently he started bleeding. And when there's blood on the floor, they blow the whistle. Blow the whistle. <laughs> right? So they blow the whistle. And that motherfucker, he kicked my knee on my right knee. And I went down on one knee. And I'm like, fuck this shit. I got up again. I'm like, move. Yeah, I'm like, Duh. Just because your son the whistle was blown, yeah. So it's, yeah. Wow. It's yeah, I had a tough time, and they used to try to starve me all the time too. They're always trying to make me like I was fat. I went in the army at 154 pounds, and they were uh -huh. constantly telling me that I was fat and uh -huh. that I that I needed to lose weight, and they were constantly measuring me. And as they kept okay, doing okay. it, but how tall are you? Five six. Okay. I'm I'm five seven and a half, and they wanted me to go in at one forty five, and I was ten pounds overweight. They made me, they they said you want to be in, you're gonna have to do something about it. So what did I do? I went to slim fast and eating vegetables out of a can and water and running and running until I got in. They're assholes, man. They they just they traumatize you with food. They traumatize women with food. They really do. But several several times, like I was late. And uh, my punishment was to not go 
to eat when everyone else eats and that they would tell me when to go eat. So several times they punished me with food, even when I was pregnant, because I was so sick during my pregnancy, I couldn't exercise. They made me go to the clinic at six in the morning and just sit there while everybody was exercising and I had to be released to go eat. So they would like do things to starve me all the time. And I just had a, an appointment with the VA, um, you know, with the, the review board. And I, you know, I'm just realizing like, why do I cry when I'm late? Or why do I weigh what I weigh when I was so small, when I was in, they were body shaming me constantly. And uh, yeah, they were basically like psychological torture. Yeah. Yeah. Body dysphoria. Yeah. Every day I look at my body, like when I'm changing or whatever in the mirror and I'm like, it's okay. Like, can I you imagine that. if we didn't do that, that we probably might have a normal weight because the fake diet that they would make us do is what makes you gain weight. And then the MREs that we had to eat. Two thousand. Some I still have two thousand awesome. uh, calories per unit. Case you know, and I can't. I won't. I don't like to eat them. I'm like I only have them around in case there's an emergency. Yeah. <laughs> 2000 calories per. Yeah, that's a lot. I I I even bought a book, a fat book. Finally gave it away a few years ago. I had to count fat calories. I had to it was wow. Good. I even went Oh, oh that's your chart. You sent me a chart. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. So it would be nice. I'm I'm thinking we could do a star chart thingy with um Miss Bay, you and maybe if if uh, Power Lady wants to be on, and then we can talk about the star charts. I mean, that'd be awesome. And then we can also do the whole Telegram thing with making stuff. I've always wanted to do that because there's some ladies on YouTube that will go live, and then people are just like they're crafting together, different things. Yeah. So, yeah. Why are you making that face? My cat is like jumping over the feathers. So it's like, it's like I'm just like hoping he did. I was just hoping he didn't attack it or something. Like, <laughs> not a bird. It's not real. <laughs> not a bird. I'm not funny, but you'll see me running through because I'm that. Yeah. Because I'm super girl. Yeah, that was awesome, though. This was great. Uh, you always are so relaxed and so bubbly. And I'm like, oh, my God. Yeah, it's comfortable. I love it. Thank you. Love, love, love. Well, thank you for being on again. And I will have this on up soon. Got to go walk Miss Anubis Lola here. Oh, this is Miss Anubis Lola. She wants me to take her for a walk. Say bye. I don't like her to kiss me. I love her. I love her. But I just, she eats, you know. Yeah. She eats poop outside. I'm like, no. Oh. Hey, but protect me, right? Even oh. the cats, even the cats. I didn't know that they they might not eat poop, but they eat enough other stuff. Yeah. I know, girl. So all right. Well, I love you, Miss Lady Erica Womb Man. And thank of you. Of the stars. Of the stars. So just Google our names and you'll find us. Love you guys. Bye. Thank you. <laughs>